Hey guys, my name is Tony Maritato. I'm a licensed physical therapist. And in this video, I am going to help you better understand what to expect from your physical therapy experience after you've had a very specific shoulder surgery. So this is gonna talk about a recovery program for what's called a subacromial decompression. That is not a rotator cuff repair. It can be done with a rotator cuff repair, but this protocol is specifically for somebody who had a subacromial decompression without a rotator cuff repair. The subacromial decompression is essentially is when they go into the shoulder joint, they maybe remove the bone spur that's hanging off of the acromion process or they resect a portion of the clavicle they clean up and debride the shoulder maybe remove the bursa there it, it is a surgical procedure but it is different than a rotator cuff repair rotator cuff repair is going to require a longer recovery and a more conservative protection period during the first four to six weeks so let's jump in this is a protocol specifically from the Brigham and Women's Hospital. It, I'll put a link to this protocol in the description of this video so you can have it for reference, but it's a really great, well-studied protocol. So if I start with phase one, some of the goals of phase one, and phase one will cover from day one to day 14, so the first two weeks of recovery. Our goal is to restore pain-free range of motion whether it be active, passive, or active assist. We want to prevent muscular atrophy and inhibition. Usually before surgery, you've been dealing with pain and soreness in the shoulder for a while. You haven't been able to do the things that you wanna do, and as a result, the shoulders become weak and deconditioned. We wanna decrease pain and inflammation. So pain, is a sensory experience. Pain, uh, pain is dependent on context. Pain has a lot of influencing factors. Inflammation is a chemical problem. Now an inflamed tissue can cause pain, but inflammation can be more thought of as a chemical problem while pain is a sensory issue. We want to talk about improving postural awareness. A lot of times patients will develop compensatory patterns while the shoulder has been painful. They'll reinforce those patterns after surgery because often we're a little bit anxious and concerned. We tend to hike the shoulder and try to protect or guard the shoulder. So we want to break some bad habits as they're forming or after they've formed. We want to minimize stress to the healing structures. A lot of time when they remove the bone spur or cut pieces of the bone away, the ends of those bones are gonna be raw, they're gonna be sensitized and painful. We wanna try and calm down a lot of that. And we want to build independence toward ADLs. ADLs are activities of daily living. So think of your basic stuff, right? You're bathing, you're eating, you're um, you know, dressing, sleeping, positioning, lifting, carrying, all of those things that you have to do on a normal daily basis, those are ADLs. We want to improve and regain function in that. And then of course we want to move away from the sling. So the biggest difference between something like this and a post-operative recovery program for a rotator cuff repair is this requires less protection because there was no repair. This kind of cleaned up the joint. It didn't repair a tendon or a muscle. So we can start being active much more early in the process compared to a rotator cuff repair. Of course, precautions. We want to take um, precautions with certain movements like abduction. That's with the arm away from the body, reaching up. Almost think of making a snow angel when you were a kid laying in the snow. Um, we want to be a little bit cautious with that. We want to avoid unnecessary compression of the subacromial structures because that is where they went in and shaved the bone, uh, usually removing the bone spur. We, want to, we don't want to create or reinforce poor movement patterns. And that's where I said patients tend to hike the shoulder when they're trying to elevate the hand. We want to relax the shoulder. We lift the hand as far as we can without compensatory action so that we get nice, clean movements through the shoulder. We don't want to build any bad habits. From a range of motion perspective in phase one, we're gonna talk mostly passive range of motion, but this can be done in many ways. The therapist can move your arm, that's the most common passive range of motion, but there are also strategies that the therapist will teach you that'll allow you to achieve passive range of motion on your own. 
Active assisted range of motion. That means the other non-surgical hand is helping the surgical hand go through range of motion, but the surgical hand arm is starting to work through the motion with the goal of moving to active range of motion, which is the surgical arm does it completely on its own. We'll do stuff like pendulum exercises, pulleys, canes, self stretches. I also like self massage at this point, using a tennis ball against the door frame. I have other videos on the channel showing you how to do multiple self massage strategies, but we're focusing on certain structures within the shoulder, specifically the posterior joint capsule. That's the back of the shoulder, the connective tissue in the back of the shoulder. We're gonna work on the upper trapezius and all the musculature below the upper trapezius and the chest, the pectoralis major. That's the big chest muscle that comes across. That's the muscle that tends to get tight and guarded when the shoulder's in pain. It kind of pulls you down and forward. So we want to work on sh positioning the shoulder, shoulder blade in an optimal alignment. From a strengthening perspective during the first phase, we're going to look at isometrics. That is when you're contracting the muscles without movement in the joint. And then we're going to talk about isotonics. So these are going to be actual more conventional strengthening exercises. It could be very light dumbbells. It could be TheraBand for resistance. It could be you moving against your own body weight in modified position so that you can control the resistance. But in all of these cases, these exercises are intended to be pain-free through the entire range of motion. If you're experiencing pain, talk to your physical therapist because you're probably not ready for that particular strengthening exercise. Modality. So cryotherapy is cold therapy. You can put an ice pack on the shoulder. Some patients respond well to heat. Talk to your surgeon. If there's a reason they don't want you to use heat following this procedure, they will tell you. Other modalities that you might not have access to outside of the therapy clinic would be electric stimulation, interferential current. Um, these have been suggested to reduce pain and swelling. They certainly don't help the healing process, but if they reduce the pain and the fear and the anxiety of movement, maybe they help you move a little bit better. Um, not listed here would also be devices like a TENS unit that some people might have from other injuries that they could talk to their surgeon about using on the shoulder. The criteria before you progress to phase number two is we want full active range of motion and passive range of motion. We want minimum pain and tenderness. So if pain is causing you to compensate or guard or do something that's not normal, you're just not ready to progress to the next level. Some people are ready to progress in two or three days. Some people are not ready to progress even after three or four months. So while these time frames are general recommendations, this doesn't mean that it's always going to be appropriate for every person. So guys, in the next video, we'll progress to phase number two. And then in the third video, we'll hit, we'll hit phase number three. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please take a minute to do so. And I will see you on the next video.